guys. Welcome to the 20 Minute Bible Study. I'm Vince Miller, your host. I'm so excited to be with you here as we launch into a new year. Today, we're gonna to be looking at purpose. And you know, purpose is just trying to find that central aim in our life. And everybody wants to live with a sense of purpose, I believe. So it's a great way, I'd say, to start the year. But here's what's interesting about this. I run into people all the time uh, especially other guys that feel like they live a purposeless life. In fact, facts say that in American culture, only about 25% of people can actually articulate their life purpose, which is tragic because this is our way to finding fulfillment and happiness. And what's really interesting, I think, about purpose is purpose is often found when we are refined through the fire. It requires some pain, some endurance, some trials along the way, and people that have been through trials often can articulate their purpose better than others. So let's just take Viktor Frankl. Many of you know who that is, but he wrote a book called A Man's Search for Meaning. He wrote it in nine days as a Holocaust survivor. And I think it's really interesting if you look back at Viktor Frankl's life and see what he endured in the prisons, in the Nazi prisons, you would come to discover that this guy endured a lot and went through a lot of heat and trial in his life. But he said this, he says, when a man uncovers a sense of purpose in life, he says, then you can survive almost anything. And I think that he makes a huge statement there, not only for uh, all mankind, but for you specifically, in that it's going through the fires that clarifies our purpose. In fact, Helen Keller said this, true happiness, true happiness is not attained through self-gratification, but through fidelity to a worthy purpose. In fact, when we find happiness, we are probably finding and discovering our purpose. But I think it's so complex for each and every one of us. Take my mother, for example. My mother, uh, biological mother, was uh, adopted by my grandparents. And I remember the day I found it out, I was about 19 years old. My mother never told me that she was adopted, but one day one of my friends made a statement as they noticed my mom, they said, have you noticed that your mom doesn't look anything like your grandmother and grandfather? It's something I'd never noticed before. They pointed it out. And here I am 19 years old going to my mom saying to you, one of my friends, you're not going to believe what he said. He said this, and of course, at that moment, she begins to explain to me the story of her adoption. Never knew it. My grandmother told me the story went like this. She tried to have children. She couldn't, nearly died the last time that she tried. And because of this, one day, they had given up hope that they would ever have kids. But my grandfather was making his way off a naval base one day, was walking through a pretty dark part of town, heading to a local bar when he ran into a prostitute that was selling a child. And that child that she was selling was my mom. They purchased my mom from this woman, woman went on to legally adopt her and brought her into my grandparents' home. Now, interesting, uh, this became really a, an interesting emotional a spiritual journey for my mom later in life. And I watched her really try to uncover who she was and her past, even though she was raised by two very great people. And I watched her life kind of spiral out of control as she searched for her biological mom. And believe it or not, her biological mom lived within a mile of her home her whole life and had watched her and studied her and paid attention from the distance her whole life. And I just think it was remarkable to watch my mom to go through these very difficult and trying years of trying to know who she was and un uncover who she was so that she could discover her purpose. And I think this is true for all of us. In fact, recently, uh, if you didn't hear about the story, Pete Davidson from Saturday Night Live, famous comic, uh, recently tweeted this. In a very public way, he made note that he was trying to discover and uncover his purpose. Here's what he said. He said, I don't really want to be on this earth anymore. I'm doing my best to stay here for you, but actually, I don't know how much longer I can last. All I've ever tried to do is help people. Just remember, I told you so. And I think this alludes to the fact that Pete, just like all of us, are searching for our purpose, but sometimes we find it elusive and hard to find. And without it, it gives us 
it, without it, it, we give up on meaning and, and hope and existence and purpose and happiness and joy. And I think that he's looking for just this. But we have to address all the unspoken issues that go along with just finding our purpose. Number one, I think this is the fact that, that sometimes we don't even know what it is we're pursuing for that matter. Or number two, we have such limiting or self-defeating thoughts that keep us kind of enslaved to our past and keep us from pursuing the purpose of the future, or I think three, the big one, and I think this is really the big one that keeps all of us from pursuing our real purpose, and that is that we pursue endless things that have no real value to them. Money, success, retirements, possessions, whatever it may be, something that we believe that will give us significance that really doesn't have it at all. And I know there's a lot of questions here, which raises a lot of tension, but when we come back, we will be joined by a guest who will help us to dive in deeper into this topic, and then we'll open up the Bible and see what God says. Get your day started right. Sign up for the Men's Daily Devotional at mensdevo.org. That's mensdevo.org. They're short, sweet, and to the point. Read them and share them with the men you know and get into God's Word daily. Well, man, welcome to the 20. Scott, good to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I know we've had you here before, but that you kind of are our token Hebrew and Greek nerd. You know that, right? Like, uh, Well, I'll accept that. Yeah. Thank you. That's <laughs> you are. very kind you're of you because I know you're a Hebrew and Greek nerd as well <laughs> in some right. ways. Yeah, that's right. I, I tend not to tell people that because they're kind of like, they don't even know what that means. Okay. But, you know, for the most part, I think you can learn so much by deep, digging in deeper to the text, right? Scott, yeah. I'm glad to have you with us. I know that you also lead a ministry effort called Empowering Ranch and... You are almost, we'd call you a part-time counselor of yep. men and women as yep, well, yep. right? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we got a lot to bring to the table today. I, you know, we teed this whole thing up by talking about purpose, right? And I think that people out there are really looking for purpose, trying to understand it, trying to uncover it. Uh, how do you see people trying to understand or uncover their purpose in life? What are the typical patterns that you see from? I think mainly busyness. I think when people are trying to find it and can't find it, or even if they are trying to find it, they just keep trying harder and harder and keep going faster and faster and faster. And I think it just kind of becomes like a hamster wheel, right? Like yeah. at some point we've got to stop and retool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, it feels like people just keep trying harder and harder. I mean, we're... Americans are working harder and longer than any people in the history of the world. Hmm. Well, that's got that's really a humbling fact right there. Yeah. And it obviously it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, you're probably meeting with people all the time who feel like they're kind of running the rat race and it's not very helpful to just try harder and to move faster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It actually uh, uh, when I do talk with people, it feels like there's no margin for for a lot of things. I mean, God being one of the biggest ones. Yeah. And so like when we're, we're trying to uncover what purpose really is, it sounds like busyness is not the answer. Working harder not, is not the answer. What do you tell people like when they come to you? I mean, how do you get them to uncover a sense of purpose in their life? What's, what's the path to doing that? I think a person has to take a look at their uniqueness because yeah, we're all humans, but we're all very different. Like I was even thinking, I don't even know why I was thinking about this on the drive over, but I was thinking about my Wells Fargo bank accounts oh, and yeah. how I've labeled the five different accounts, something different mm -hmm. and how we're applying for something at the bank right now. And they're probably like going, man, this guy's got bizarre titles on his accounts. And like, <laughs> why does he have this much money in this account and this much money in that account? Like, what is this guy? Like, we're all that unique. And so... I think we need to take a look at our uniqueness and partially become okay with it because so often people see somebody they respect and then they just try to be like them. And that's, that's missing the point. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're in the image of a creative God and he wants us to be uniquely us. Yeah. 
exactly. And so some of it is probably found down that path of like uncovering our uniqueness. Um, it's, it seems like when I look out at the world today that people are very, very busy. Like I, I would, I would agree with you. I think that as I meet people today, they are far busier today than they were when I was a kid, for yeah. example. And I would assume that we look decades in the past, they are far more busier today than we were decades ago. Yeah, yeah. So the challenge becomes not only is there busyness on top of this, but we're, we're pushing into our purpose the wrong way. Mm. We're trying to discover it the wrong way. I mean, yeah. you, you seem to be a guy who lives life with a lot of intentional purpose. And because I know you, I can speak from that perspective. But yeah. how did you find your purpose? Well, I would say it was, uh, it was a long journey. I'm talking a good 22 years before some of the pieces really started to kind of come together. Okay, I want to I hear more about that. Okay, okay so it, it, 22 years of like confusion and busyness oh, and yeah. rat race. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, I mean, 18 years old. Well, and one thing I could back up and say quickly is that if you want to hear more about my story, I did some podcasts with Vince, yeah. Vince on sexuality. And I tell my story in the first one and how I had gotten myself into a lot of sexual bondage young. And so by the time I turned 18, I'm not even really thinking about purpose. I'm so stuck in my bondage that that's my focus. When Instead of being able to think about purpose at 18, I'm spending time doing other things. And so I think that can block purpose too. Mm -hmm. If people are in bondage, they're not going to be able to even really think about it clearly. So I spent 18 to 40, so it was... Bible college, seminary, then, you know, I had the degrees to do uh, ministry, but I didn't have the character because I'm still stuck in sexual addiction. Mm -hmm. And so I spent probably until I was 32, I finally got into some recovery groups when I was 32 and spent the next two years recovering. So now I'm probably 34-ish. And now I'm starting to really wrestle with what is my purpose once I got enough freedom to enter that conversation. And then I spent from 34 to 40 going through lots of different jobs. I had, yeah, anyways, that's yeah. more story there. Finally realizing at 40, not that I was perfect, but I had enough character to enter in. And so at 40 is when we started Empowering Ranch because we felt like we were at the point where God was saying it's time. Yeah. Enter. So God kind of let you, you kind of feel like God let you live out your purposes after he did some business with some bondage, with yep. developing some skill, with developing some character. Man, I think that is a super interesting timeline. And let me just comment on that in a second. I think that that is interesting because I think most people's journeys would emulate that maybe in different frames of time. But the markers would probably be very similar. We have to kind yeah. of do some business with sin. Yep. Right. Yeah. Got to do some business with character, business with skill before we ever really get to the place where we can actually live fully or maybe completely in our purpose. God has got some work to do. Yep. So yep, yep. with this, I want to read a couple of verses cool. today and kind of dive into some All Bible right. study. But All right. uh, I think these verses are remarkable. OK. And, uh, you know, this is a Psalm of David. I know you're a little bit of a David geek, yep, yep, right? Yep. So uh, I know you love Hebrew. So we're going to be reading not from the Hebrew Bible, but from the English Bible that was written originally in Hebrew. Yep. So here's what it says in Psalm 139, verse uh, 13. It says, for you formed my inward parts. Hmm. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. I think that has a lot to say about purpose, mm. right? I mean, I, th I think a text like that, David is, is helping us to see his purpose in a very unique way. I mean, when you read words like that, what jumps off the page at you here? Well, what jumps off to me is that he's not talking about a job. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. So like people are always thinking about their, their purpose. And sometimes I like to say that jobs are assignments. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times people mix their purpose and their jobs or their assignments. And I would say, actually, it might be a good idea to keep them separate because he's not talking about a job here. Mm -hmm. He's talking about this identity of you knew me in my mother's womb and that word no is uh, yada. Actually, 
Seinfeld, they went to the bedroom, yada, yada, yada. That's yeah, the yeah, same yeah, word because yeah. Jerry's <laughs> Jewish, yada, right? Yada, so, yada, yada, yeah, yada. yeah. So like they're yeah. referring to the Hebrew <laughs> word to know, yeah, for knowing. To know. And Adam knew Eve and she got pregnant. So knowing is not about intellect and knowledge. And that's usually how people approach the Bible is I just need yeah. to know more about the Bible. I need to... And that's not what knowledge in the when for lack of knowledge my people perish for lack of intimacy my pe- people perish that's the heart of yeah. that knowledge, and and I love the fact that that's where he lands for purpose is on being intimately known by his mother and by God. Mm-hmm. So that soul knowing is a big piece of really understanding purpose, and I love, and I think we need to make this point because I think it's super important that sometimes when we're looking for purpose, we conflate our, let's say, macro purpose with a micro purpose. And that micro purpose being our vocation, right? And I think some people out there who are looking for purpose today are kind of saying, I'm looking for the right job. I'm looking for the right life work, right? And I think that pursuit is fair. There's some validity to that. Yeah, there's all kinds of validity to it. But the problem is if we pursue that without really understanding that, let's call it macro purpose or having that larger knowing, yada, right? Mm -hmm. That larger knowing and understanding what that knowing is that we may miss the intimacy and the, the value of this text. He understood, I think, and I think this is rightly ordered to say this, is that David, when he wrote these words, understood that his purpose wasn't found in a vocation or a job or what did you call it? An assignment, a temporary assignment, because jobs are just temporary assignments, right? I mean, when you and I retire, is our purpose done? I hope not. Right. (laughs) So then my purpose isn't my job and my assignment. Right, right. There's something greater there, right? And it's, I think we fail to find our purpose because we fail to really turn to the creator who created us and listen to his design of us, like you were saying. And I think that's sometimes why people get all confused about this. Don't you think that we pursue all these things of this world, right, that are very focused on who we are exclusively and that fail to account for how God made us and created us? And we got to turn to the creator outside of ourselves to find our purpose that he gave to us in our, it says here, in our mother's womb. Don't you think that's yep. significant? It is. It is. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. And you, you and I talked on that one podcast a long time ago how God has a womb in Deuteronomy 30 and wants to womb us, which speaks to being born again. Mm-hmm. So like this whole thing of the mother and and being born again and like it is it's the place to start all Mm -hmm. purpose has to come out of like home base Mm -hmm. so to speak Mm -hmm. well isn't that interesting that that phrase is a very new testament phrase to be born again or an old testament phrase for that matter right Mm -hmm. i think jesus and nicodemus were thinking about thinking about the deuteronomy 30 30, right exactly so there's this idea of we want to experience that second birth right but we have to allow ourselves to be nurtured in what is our true design. And our true design is to be designed for the purposes of God, period. We were designed for his purposes. You and I weren't made for us. We were made for God. Right. But most of us, including myself, plenty of times over the course of my life, I live for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard it said that we call ourselves Christians, but we actually live like atheists. Like we kind of live like we don't even believe there's a God. We, we don't ask God what, I, what we should do. We just kind of go about our life. We do what we think is best and we're living for ourselves instead of realizing like I wasn't made for me. I was made for God. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we conflate in this whole journey here. It's just like we were talking about in the monologue today, that we really get confused about our purpose because we go about pursuing it in all the wrong ways. It's not a selfish pursuit. It's not only about us. It's about how the designer created us and to live for his purposes. And when we live for his purposes, along the way, we discover how he can use us for his purposes, not our own. And I think that... That little uh, juxtaposition there yeah. is a significant one for many people. And I think that's why we have to go through a long journey of discovering his purposes before we can really discover how he wants to use us here in our life. And a long journey of dying to self, right? I mean, yeah. 22 years of me right. 
till finally kind of starting to enter in a little bit more mm-hmm. to God's purposes. That's great. Thanks for being with us today, Scott. Guys, uh, I hope this was beneficial for you. I, I do want to give you a challenge today, an all-in challenge. I'd love for you to, to see you go all-in by living by God's purpose and therefore discovering yours. It's only when we live for God's purposes that we discover our own along the way and how he will use us for his created purpose. Love it. So guys, thanks for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we hope that you'll join us again right back here on the 20 minute Bible study. We'll see you next time. Don't do nothing, do something. Get off the bench and get into the game.